I've been away for so long and I'm feeling like ice on the water I miss And the eyes are like flies, this scene I despise I long for the times when I'm one of the boys Welcome to Badger's Key, Newfoundland. This is where I grew up. This is where my family are from. Population of about a little over 300. Well, minus 34. <laughs> Badger's Key! Just behind me is my Uncle June's and Aunt Nellie's house. Uh, Uncle June is my dad's brother. He raised three children here with my uh, Aunt Nellie. Uh, June is short for Junior. He was named after my grandfather, Gaston. Here's my sister's house, Lisa. Uh, she married Cliff Kane, her, her high school sweetheart, and uh, had a beautiful daughter named Emily. Lisa works in Badger's Key in the senior citizen's home and actually just moved a uh, few houses down from where she grew up. The beige house behind me with the veranda was floated over from Safe Harbor during resettlement. This is where my grandmother, Drusilla, and my grandfather, Gaston, raised five boys and one daughter. This is the house that was floated over from Safe Harbor. It's where I grew up and my father. When I was growing up, there was me, my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my grandmother, and my, and my other grandmother, and my grandfather. Hello. Feel cold, wife. <laughs> this is my Uncle June. Oh, and Aunt Nellie. Hi. You cold, uh, I'm froze. And we're actually just getting ready for a potluck. There should be about 30 or 40 of us showing up now soon. <laughs> well, that was my family. Well, most of them. Uh, they couldn't all make it. Some were busy at work and or out of town. Uh, but that was most of them, and uh, the old and the young, and uh, they all pretty much live in this community or surrounding communities, not too far away. The house was always in Badger's Key. I was from Badger's Key. I wasn't from Safe Harbor. I was from Badger's Key. That house was from Safe Harbor, but that wasn't even the house was from Badger's Key because that's where it is now. And the house is a fairly big house, thirty by thirty, so uh, two story. And uh, there was, a, I think there was 120 all drums or barrels, 45 gallon drums uh, at, at times that they used uh, that were uh, put on the floor of the house and sealed over so as they couldn't move. And this is what gave the house flotation, bringing it from Safe Harbor to Badger's Key. I think, I think from what I know about resettlement is a lot of people did fight against resettlement, but it's something that had to happen, change had to happen, and it kind of happening now with these communities, you know, it's not so much, the thing is though, you can't take your house anymore, you just sell it and you, or you leave it and you go somewhere else, right? It's the, the same kind of thing that happened to them, they were, had to leave their hometown. Now where we took it from in Safe Harbor was off a mountain, right? And you can notice where we're to here, if you were looking at the seashore, it had to come up over about 20, feet or more over some pretty uh, steep embankment right here, right? There were obviously people that were against it. I don't really know if my family was against it or not. Um, I think they just, they, they knew they had to and they did. And they, they moved to a beautiful spot, so. So you wonder how they did it with, uh, you know, it was just uh, common knowledge that the engineering today would, you would need maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars to take on something like that, right? But uh, they did it and they didn't beat anything up, but, you know, it was uh, quite quite defeat that uh, just ordinary people, my father and a few other, my brothers and that, how they could do something like this, right? Uh, with the help of a whole gentleman named Stanley Dyke, who moved most of the houses at the time. He had a winch that he got off a whole ship somewhere. And this is what he used to take the house of Hinch at a time. It's with this winch, right? And all the wood that had to be cut uh, took a year, uh, a full winter cutting wood uh, to lay, lay the slip for the house to be pulled up down off the hill over there. It had to come down gradual and to be pulled up here. So they had to cut a lot of wood. It took them a full winter to do that. I don't say it'll go anywhere else. 
you know, if, if this community was to not exist or mom and dad were to leave, I don't think they're going to float their house down to, you know, Maine or anything. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we were the last ones to leave Safe Harbor, too, right? I mean, we didn't want to leave Safe Harbor. My family certainly and would have stayed there. And still, like, we like Safe Harbor so much that it's still part of home. We still call that home, too, right? There's something, there's definitely something different about the the island culture. It's, it's not like anywhere else. Uh, you meet people who come from other parts of the world and they come to Newfoundland, Newfoundland, St. John's or, or somewhere in Newfoundland. They go, wow, this is completely different. Well, being from here was almost like being on a completely different island. There's a peaceful, peacefulness about this place, right? Living in this community, uh, and uh, there's a peacefulness about it that is, you can't put your finger on it, right? You just say this is it. It's just there, and 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 it's and it's just beautiful. I know for, for when I'm out in these places for long periods of time, I tend to um, go into shock when I'm in the cities. It's all a little too much overwhelming. Even the, the white sound, the noise in the background, the muttering of people is, is, is an unfamiliar sound. You know, besides the traffic and this, it's the white noise in general that makes it uncomfortable and you've got to adjust to that. It's like adjusting to a, cars driving by your house and having to sleep if, if, if you spend so much time and, you know, in a tent out in the middle of the wilderness, then those noises are going to bother you. Not the, not as peaceful. I really appreciate this community. When from the first day, uh, I remember going away for the first few months, and uh, after I got married, to work in Labrador City. Uh, great place, good job, lots of money being made there. Uh, but I still, I didn't, I wasn't doing the things that I loved. I wasn't out doing the hunting on the ocean. I loved the ocean more than anything, right? And I wasn't able to do that. So I think the ocean is, is a big thing with us. And uh, we can get, if I can get up and look out and see that ocean, then I feel peaceful. And it's got to be that ocean, not somewhere else, seems like, right? So we're survivors, I guess. <laughs> and we like where we're to. I, I don't know why. Because some people don't like being here and move away, but I think it's the freedom that we have. A sense of a sense of uh, belonging uh, and the freedom, right? We can do things that uh, we have grown accustomed to. Especially for me, it would be going out catching a fish or something in the season, uh, duck hunting in season, go and shoot a few tours, and you get your sealing. And when the season comes around, sealing and and everything seems to fall in place. Right, and, and, and we do it all from here. Most people I talk to would rather be in Newfoundland in, their, in the community they, they grew up in. There's something about the Hopeport community, the friendliness and uh, the family and the sense of well-being and uh, being cared for. My, my sister uh, did uh, marry her high school sweetheart. They've been, I can't remember my brother-in-law not being around. Feels weird calling him brother-in-law, really. He's like my brother. He's watched me grow up. He's, he's been great in my life. Uh, he's been great to my sister. When I met my wife, uh, Clementine, I, I don't call her that, but some people do. Uh, I call her Clem. <laughs> it's short. <laughs> when I met her, uh, we were 17, I think it was. And, uh, you know, we were in a restaurant. I remember then it was restaurants everywhere. In the community, there was five or six restaurants in this community, and in West Louisville, there was three or four. And, oh my, there, there was so much more than we have today for younger people. It wasn't until I went to high school that I that I met a lot of people from Wesleyville and Newtown and Pound Cove and even Greens Pond, which is a which is a community that's a bit further away. 
from us about 20, 25 minutes, I guess. And uh, that was a long distance call when, when, whenever you wanted the uh, data girl from Greenspond, you had to uh, <laughs> pay the price, I guess. 